Okay, so let's get started with buttons. We'll create a new section down here. Buttons. And we will showcase our button in a simple table. We'll be designing three types of buttons. The first one will be the default button that we kind of use all the time. Then the danger buttons that are here to warn the user of a dangerous or irreversible action. And finally, primary buttons for important actions. Okay, so let's make those titles a little bit more visible. Okay, let's see how we want to use these buttons. So we're going to call them base buttons. For the default button, I want this to work out of the box. And for the other two, all I want is to add a prop that will change the style of the button. So for example, for the danger button, I just want to add danger and that will automatically style our danger button for us. Same for primary. I'm just going to add some padding here to make them breeze. And now let's register our base button. Okay, so we're going to use a button tag and use the slot tag to insert whatever was inside the component. Now the first step is to actually style that component. So we'll have two types of classes. We'll have the classes that apply to every button and we'll have the classes that depend on various factors. For example, the type of button we want to style, whether it's danger, primary or default. Because I'm going to try and stay consistent in the design of my buttons, uh, all I really want to change in the variable classes is basically the background colors, the border colors, the text colors, all that type of thing. But the, the padding, the roundness of the corners, the whether or not there is a border or not, all of that should be valid for any button. So I want a rounded border. I want an horizontal padding of four and a vertical padding of two. I want the text to be a little bit smaller and a little bit bolder. Okay, maybe not that bold. Yeah, that's better. Finally, I also want all of the buttons to have some shadow and uh, the shadow to grow whenever we hover on top of it. So hover, shadow, medium. Okay, so that's the skeleton of our buttons. Now let's style them based on their type. So we'll add a variable here called button type and we'll register that as a computed property. What we want this computed property to do is to delegate to another computed property based on the type of the button. So if we have the danger props provided, then we will return this dot button danger. Similarly, if we provide the primary props, then we want button primary. And if nothing is provided, we just want to return button default. Now, obviously we need to register those props. So let's do this. Danger is a Boolean and so is primary. Next, let's add those new computed properties. And now we're ready to style our different types. So let's start with the default button. Let's give it a white background and a gray border. When we hover on top of it, uh, the shadow increases, but I also want the border and the text to be a little bit darker. So let's do that real quick. Okay, 
Okay, yeah, that's better. We're going to do something very similar for our danger buttons. We want a very light red background with a red border and some red text. And again, we want that border and that text to be darker when we're hovering on top of it. Just like that. Finally, we're going to make our primary button blue with a blue border and a white text. To make it stand out a little bit, we're going to make the text uppercase, which means we've got to increase the tracking a little bit. And of course, we still want the border to be a little bit darker when we hover on top of it. So our primary button looks good, but I'm a big fan of giving gradient background to primary buttons. And I've created a plugin that makes us do that very quickly. So let's download it and use it. So let's go to my Tailwind CSS plugin repository. And if you scroll down to available plugins, you can see gradient. And let's install it. Next, we need to register it in our configuration file. Uh, so in the plugin section here. And now we can define our primary gradient in our configuration. So gradient primary. Now, as you can see here, the first element of the array is the angle at which we want the gradient to be displayed. So let's do 45 degrees in our case. And the following elements are just the colors that we want, and we can add unlimited amount of colors. In our case, we'll just do two shades of blue. So we'll do colors blue 400 and colors blue 600. And obviously, we need to make this a function so that we've got access to the theme variable. OK, so now we're all set and done. We can just go back to our Paparazzi application and change our background for the primary button. So instead of BG Blue 500, we just need BG Primary. And yeah, I think that looks a bit better. So now that we've designed our three types of buttons, I'd like to add another modifier which will make our button smaller. So let's go back to our app.view and let's copy that row. Now, all I want to change is I want to add the small modifier here, small prop, and I want to automatically have smaller buttons. So obviously at the moment it doesn't work, it generates the same buttons, but let's implement that. First, we'll register our props here as a Boolean again. And then we'll add another dynamic class here called button size. Now the button size is going to change two things, the padding and the size of the text. So at first, I'm going to cut all of this and paste it in the new computed property button size. Now what we can do is we can say if this dot small was provided, then style it that way. Otherwise, style it this way. So when we need a smaller button, we will reduce the spacing by two. So px2 and py1, and we will make the text extra small. And yeah, I'm quite happy with the results. Next, I want to do a similar thing, but instead of adding a small modifier, I want to add a disabled modifier. All right, so let's copy that row again. And instead of small, we will write disabled. Now let's implement that. Again, we will register our props disabled as a Boolean. 
and add another dynamic class called button disabled. And we'll register that as a computed property. So the first thing that I want for a disabled button is for the cursor to be not allowed. So we'll do cursor not allowed. And then at least when we hover on top of our disabled button, we can see some feedback that says you shouldn't click on it. The next thing is I don't want any shadows at all for disabled buttons. So whether we hover on top of it or not, I just don't want any shadow. And the shadow at the moment is configured as a normal class, so available for every button. So we'll just cut that out of here. And we'll say we only want shadow if the button isn't disabled. OK, so that's as much as we can do here. I want to do more. Like Typically, I want to fade those colors a little bit for it to be visually clear that we can't click this button. But in order to do that, we need to change the classes that are defined in the different types of buttons. So what we'll do is very simple. We will copy this disabled props and we'll add a check for each of our button types. OK, so now all we have to do is redesign those button types as disabled button. So let's start with the default button right here. So we still want a white background, but we want a lighter border and the lighter text. And of course, we don't want any of the hover classes because we don't want anything to happen when we hover on top of it, aside from the cursor not allowed. OK, so next, the danger button. We still want that light red background, but again, we want a lighter border and a much lighter text. Finally, for the primary button, we will give it a very light blue, and we won't bother with the gradient for the disabled button. We will give it a blue border as well. And actually, that works well for the disabled button, so let's make that one a little bit darker, the normal one. Yeah, that's nicer. Yeah. OK, and for the text of the disabled button, we will just copy-paste what we had before. So white, uppercase, and a wider tracking. One last thing that we should do for disabled button is actually warn the user that this is a disabled button. So we'll do disabled equals disabled. OK, and now we have disabled button. If I go back to my app.view file, I can actually duplicate that line and make buttons small and disabled at the same time. And that works fine. Now, there is one last styling details that I want to mention. At the moment, when you hit tab on your page, it will highlight uh, your buttons in a way that is dependent on your browser and your operating system. So what I'd like is to actually take control of that outline that is around the buttons. And that's very, very simple to do in Tailwind CSS. So let's go back to our base button. And we'll say, when it's focus, outline none. That means don't outline it. I'll take care of it myself. So now if I go back here and I press tab, nothing happens. So now to define our own style, we need to say focus, shadow, outline. And that's a special type of outline that Tailwind CSS provides for us, which is blue by default, which I think is really nice. And now when we press tab, we can see that blue outline, which is consistent with our design and will be consistent across every platform. Another quick thing I want to do is add a blue border whenever it's focused, because at the moment I find the, the blue shadow, the blue outline and the red border to kind of not go really well together. So we'll do focus, border, blue, and let's do 400. OK, so now you can see that the outline blends a lot better with the button when we are focusing it. And before I wrap this video, there is a last detail, which is extremely important, because at the moment, 
if we add a click listener to one of our buttons, let's say this one, say hi, and let's define this as a method down here. And we click on that button, nothing happens. So if we want our buttons to actually work, uh, there is one last thing we need to do. So we'll go to base button and we'll add V on listeners. So listeners is a variable provided by Vue.js and it contains any event listeners that were registered on the component itself. So now we're basically saying whatever event listeners were registered on the component, make sure it's registered on that button tag. So now if I save this and click on the first button, yeah, it works. So that's everything I've got for buttons for now. In the next episode, we'll go back to our panels real quick and add one last panel which will make use of buttons.